Good afternoon, Dunkirk and Fredonia listeners, and welcome back to News at Noon. I'm News Director Cassio Fonseca here today with News Assistants Lee Pai and Joshua Ribikov, and in this Top of the Hour update, we'll bring you the latest on news and events around SUNY Fredonia's campus and community, as well as the latest in national news and weather. First up, we'll bring it to Lee for our latest Wednesday campus news updates. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Here's your campus news. Cranston Marsh is being covered in purple, not with paint, but with support from students. Come dressed up in purple and enjoy a variety of purple foods in or in effort to support Relay for Life. Relay for Life is a walk for the American Cancer Society, which is one of the largest fundraising events in the world. According to their website, quote, for more than 35 years, communities around the globe have come together to raise funds for a future free from cancer, and we have no intention of ever slowing down, end quote. The Cranston Marsh Purple event will be from today, April 19th, through Friday, April 21st, and the Relay for Life event will be held on Saturday, April 22nd. Come jam out with the Music Industry Club at the 2023 Solstice Jam. The bands and singers performing will be Amphobia, Three, Weather Might Say Otherwise, St. Blind, and Sasha McCoy. It will be hosted on April 22nd from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. at Dodds Grove outside. Short and sweet for the news today. Back to you, Cassio. Thanks, Lee. Next up, we'll have local news. And in local news for today, a proposed Popeyes isn't the only development currently being eyed in the town of Dunkirk. Site plans have been submitted for a drive through restaurant at 3969 Vineyard Drive, the location of the Tops Market Plaza. The four-page initial application seeking the plan approval from the Town of Dunkirk Planning Board was filed on March 14th by James Boglioli, an attorney representing Benderson Development Co. A privately owned real estate developer, Benderson Development Co. is reportedly looking to put a Starbucks in the same property that also houses Little Caesars in the plaza. Boglioli does not mention the high-end coffee house chain in his application for the town planning board, only proposing a retail slash restaurant at the existing site in addition to re- to regrading for a drive through lane. However, a deputy clerk with the town planning board stated that the application is indeed for a proposed Starbucks. According to a legal notice which was placed in the Dunkirk Observer, planning board members will meet at 4.30 p.m. on Wednesday, April 26th to review plans submitted by Boglioli. The meeting will take place at Town Hall, 4737 Willow Road in Dunkirk. There are currently two Starbucks located within Chautauqua County, one on the State University of New York at Fredonia campus and another on Fairmount Avenue across from the plaza that contains Wegmans and the soon-to-be Target in the town of Ellicott. It also was previously announced that a Starbucks will be located inside of this new Target. Starbucks isn't the only popular chain being considered in the town. Planning board members last week approved the site plan for a Popeye's restaurant to be built in front of the Dunkirk Multiplex on Bennett Road. The approval goes to the the Dunkirk Town Board for a final say on April 25th. That Popeye's is being sought locally by Liberty Restaurants. That's all for local news in this week. And for national news today, we'll bring it to Josh. Thank you, Cassio. The nation is questioning its Stand Your Ground statutes after two recent shootings that saw the death of innocent people. Last Thursday, 16-year-old Ralph Yarl was shot by Andrew Lester in Kansas City after he went to the wrong address while trying to pick up his younger siblings. Yarl survived the shooting and reports to police that no words were exchanged before Lester shot him once in the head before he fell to the ground and was shot once again in the arm. And last Saturday, 20-year-old Kaylin Gillens was shot by Kevin Monahan after pulling into the wrong driveway in Hebron, New York. Her and her three friends were turning their car around to leave when Monahan stepped out onto his porch and fired two shots, one of them fatally wounding her. In a statement from attorney and gun control activist Ari Freilich, there's nothing in the law that, quote, allows someone to shoot first and ask questions later when someone innocently rings a doorbell. That's something that UPS does on a daily basis, delivery drivers, children selling Girl Scout cookies, end quote. Stand Your Ground is a statute to self-defense law that means one must show that lethal force is necessary in an altercation and that they could not have safely retreated from the situation. But many places also recognize the exception of castle doctrine, that is, the idea that there is no duty to to retreat when you are in your own home. 
According to the National Conference of State Legislatures, at least 28 states do not recognize duty to retreat when people are at a place in which they are lawfully pre present. Today, Florida officials are expected to vote on legislation that would largely prohibit education of gender identity and sexual orientation in grades K through 12. This would be an expansion of Governor Ron DeSantis' current regulations that critics call the Don't Say Gay Law, legislation that is claimed to marginalize LGBTQ students. Right now, Florida schools cannot teach about gender identity and sexual orientation to grades kindergarten through third, but this vote would outright prohibit it with a few exceptions, barring state standard instruction and also health classes in which parents would have to sign a waiver giving permission for students to receive such education. The State Board of Education that will be voting on the proposal is appointed by Governor DeSantis himself, and if it goes through, teachers who are caught teaching about gender identity could have their teaching licenses revoked. Twitter has just removed one of their policies protecting LGBTQ folks regarding the targeted misgendering or deadnaming of transgender individuals. Twitter had originally enacted the policy in 2018, which prevents users from harassing people using their dead names by removing their posts. Now, instead of removing posts, Tweets flagged containing hateful content will have a disclaimer alerting users that they contain such content and have had their visibility limited. The Twitter team posted from their Twitter safety account, quote, We're adding more transparency to the enforcement actions we take on tweets. As a first step, soon you'll start to see labels on some tweets identified as potentially violating our rules around hateful content conduct, letting you know that we've limited their visibility, end quote. According to president and CEO of advocacy group GLAAD, Sarah Kate Ellis, quote, Twitter's decision to covertly roll back its longtime policy is the latest example of just how unsafe the company is for users and advertisers alike. This decision to roll back LGBTQ safety pulls Twitter even more out of step with TikTok, Pinterest, and Meta, all of which maintain similar policies to protect their transgender users at a time when anti-transgender rhetoric online is leading to real-world discrimination and violence, end quote. This change of policy is part of Twitter's attempt to promote what they call freedom of speech, not reach, restricting the visibility of posts that violate Twitter policies, but not outright deleting them. And that does it for today's national news. Thanks, Josh. Finally, we'll take it back to Lee for today's weather forecast. The Northern Chicago Weather Update, being brought to you by Fredonia Radio Systems. The weather today is 36 degrees Fahrenheit. It feels like 33 degrees and the high is 46 degrees. The low is 36 degrees and it's a partly cloudy day today. Uh, tomorrow, the weather will perk back up into the high 60s with a little bit of rain in the early morning and will become more and more sunny as the day goes on. That's all from me. This was Lee with your weather. Thank you, Lee and Josh. That'll wrap it up for this Wednesday's edition of News at Noon. Local news for this broadcast was prepared and read by Casio Fonseca. National news was prepared and read by Joshua Ribikov, while campus news and weather were prepared and read by Lee Pye. Board operations for this broadcast were performed by Alex Irwin. Join us for more top-of-the-hour news updates on High Noon Friday, and until then, take care. <laughs>